Hello everyone and welcome back to Art History Shorts. I'm going to end our discussion on the Realist movement by talking about the artist Rosa Bonheur. Uh, she was a less controversial uh, artist than the other two that we've talked about, Courbet and Manet. Uh, her work was in fact quite popular and prints were sold of her paintings. She was independently wealthy and was recognized as a successful artist in her lifetime. While Bonheur's art might not have been controversial, her lifestyle was. Bonner's father um, was progressively minded for the 1800s and encouraged his daughter to study art at a time when women were not permitted to attend art school. Uh, she studied animal anatomy by going down to barns and slaughterhouses at a young age. Also groundbreaking for the time, uh, Bonner was openly gay and she lived her life with a woman. She also rejected typical female attire and applied for a police permit in 1852 so that she could wear men's clothes while she worked. Bonheur's primary focus in her paintings was on animals. She was the foremost French animalier of her time, quite possibly of all time. She painted in an incredibly naturalistic way. Sometimes when I look at her paintings, I have a hard time not believing that they are photographs with how realistic they are. But she captures a feeling, an atmosphere, that I don't think that any photograph could. Her work, while in the realist tradition, did not receive the same criticism as the other two artists we talked about. In fact, the paintings she first achieved fame with Plowing in the Nivernais in 1848, was commissioned by the government. Similar to the realists, Bonheur presents man and nature working seamlessly together to yield harvest from the land. She painted the connection between society, animals, and landscape. It is all nature, humans included. Bonheur wrote, The horse is, like man, the most beautiful and miserable of creatures. Only in the case of man, it is vice or property that makes him ugly. He is responsible for his own decadence while the horse is only a slave. So the painting I want to talk about is called The Horse Fair, and it was painted between 1852 and 1855. Uh, here we see a focus on blue-collar workers, uh, and we know a realist characteristic was on focusing on everyday, unidealized work and people. This painting, considered her most famous, is substantial in size at 8 by 16 feet. It is this painting that brought the artist uh, fame outside of her own country as engravings of this scene were transported through Europe and to America. In preparation for it, she studied draft horses at the Wild Horse Market in Paris twice a week between 1850 and 1851. She made sketches, line drawings, and others in greater detail. Bonner also took inspiration from George Stubbs, uh, Theodore Jericho, and Eugene Delacroix, and uh, also from ancient Greek sculpture. She herself referred to the horse fair as her own Parthenon frieze. Uh, the Parthenon features rows of rearing, writhing horses and sculpted muscular relief. So you can see the, um, the comparison here. In Bonner's horse fair, we have a highly dramatic scene. For a painting, it captures movement beautifully and powerfully. We see these untamed horses. You can feel the movement and the drama as we are pulled into the scene by the motion and swirls of dark and light almost hearing and feeling the pounding of horse hooves and the men trying to hold on to control. Just look at the light here, how it reflects off the horses, the substantial quality of their legs. The men blend into the scene rather than stand out. The horses are given more emotion on their faces than the men. From the way she painted every subject in an equal way, uh, the beauty and intricacy of the horses and the men, we can infer that all species are equal, that there is no distinction in terms of value. Bonheur painted with such an accuracy and intricacy, her work satisfied an intense craving for realism at this time, which might sound kind of strange considering the last couple weeks I was telling you how the public for the most part didn't enjoy the realism displayed by Courbet and Manet, uh, but Bonheur kind of snuck in her messaging. Uh, she just did it in a more subtle and palatable way. Okay, everyone, this is going to wrap up our videos on the realism movement and uh, the artists that we looked at, part of this movement. Um, hopefully I was able to give some context and understanding around this movement uh, that will lead us into talking about Impressionism next time. Thanks, everyone. See you then.